Speaker Mike Johnson, our law, has given Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, DNY, an ultimatum. Join his letter inviting Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to address Congress or the House will proceed with the invitation independently. Johnson indicated that if Schumer does not sign by the end of the day, Netanyahu will be invited to address just the House with individual invitations sent to senators. Schumer has expressed openness to hosting Netanyahu, despite having criticized him previously and calling for new elections in Israel. Both Johnson and Schumer condemned the International Criminal Court's recent request for arrest warrants for Netanyahu and other leaders related to the Israel-Hamas conflict. Netanyahu's potential address to Congress could spark controversy, particularly among liberals concerned about his government and the humanitarian situation in Gaza. Senator Bernie Sanders supported the ICC's request, criticizing Netanyahu for his actions against Palestinians. Schumer's relationship with Netanyahu is also tense, having previously called for new Israeli elections and criticized Netanyahu's political actions. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken faced criticism from both Republicans and Democrats during his testimony in Congress over the Biden administration's Israel policy. Republicans accused the administration of not adequately supporting Israel, while Democrats argued it wasn't doing enough to aid civilians in Gaza. Protesters interrupted Blinken's testimony, calling him a war criminal. Blinken defended the administration's support for Israel, but emphasized efforts to address the humanitarian crisis in Gaza and opposition to an Israeli assault on Rafah. Blinken's testimony included discussions on the delay of a weapons shipment to Israel, which Republicans criticized, and on the International Criminal Court's request for arrest warrants for Israeli and Hamas leaders. Blinken and Democratic Senator Ben Cardin condemned the ICC's decision. Some Democrats urged Biden to do more to protect Palestinian civilians, with Senator Chris Van Hollen highlighting concerns about restrictions on humanitarian aid to Gaza. The ongoing humanitarian crisis in Gaza has resulted in widespread malnutrition, homelessness, and infrastructure destruction. Israel-related protests have increased, affecting congressional appearances, and potentially impacting Biden's re-election campaign. A $95 billion foreign aid package for Israel, Ukraine, Taiwan, and humanitarian needs recently passed Congress, highlighting divisions over U.S. support for Ukraine. Israel has decided to recall its ambassadors from Ireland and Norway after these countries announced plans to recognize a Palestinian state. Israeli Foreign Minister Israel Katz criticized the recognition, claiming it rewards terrorism and could hinder efforts to secure the release of hostages in Gaza and achieve a ceasefire. Katz also threatened to recall the ambassador to Spain if it follows suit. Norwegian Prime Minister Jonas Garster stated that recognizing a Palestinian state is crucial for peace in the Middle East and supports the Arab peace plan. Norway's decision aligns with its long-standing support for a two-state solution and comes amidst ongoing conflict in Gaza, where Israeli assaults have displaced hundreds of thousands and restricted aid flow. Norway's recognition, effective May 28th, follows 30 years after the Oslo Agreement and acknowledges Palestine's progress towards statehood, as noted by the World Bank in 2011. The decision is seen as a move to support Palestine's right to independence amidst the challenging conditions due to ongoing conflict and settlement expansions. Israeli forces conducted a raid on a Hamas compound in Rafah, Gaza, uncovering a tunnel and a significant weapons cache. The IDF reported eliminating dozens of Hamas terrorists during the operation. They found and destroyed various weapons, explosives, and equipment intended for attacks against Israeli forces. The raid is part of Israel's targeted strikes in Rafah, the last major Hamas stronghold in Gaza. Despite calls for a full-scale invasion, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has limited operations due to U.S. opposition and threats to withhold military aid from President Biden. The International Criminal Court, ICC, is seeking arrest warrants for Netanyahu. Defense Minister Yoav Gallant and Hamas leader Yahya Sinwar, which Israel condemned as anti-Semitic. President Biden supported Israel's right to defend itself and criticized the ICC prosecutor's actions. The decision on the arrest warrants will be made by a panel of three judges, typically taking about two months. The United Nations has halted food distribution in Rafah, Gaza,
due to a lack of supplies and worsening security from Israel's military operations. The UN warns that humanitarian efforts in Gaza are nearing collapse. The Biden administration has expressed concerns over a full-scale Israeli invasion of Rafah, which has led to modifications in Israel's plans, but not a complete green light. The humanitarian crisis has intensified, with 400,000 people still in Rafah, and aid delivery hampered by closed crossings and issues with the U.S. military's new floating pier. The UN reports near famine conditions in Gaza, with half the population facing severe hunger. Israel's actions have drawn international criticism and calls for arrest warrants from the International Criminal Court against Israeli and Hamas leaders for alleged war crimes. Israel denies the accusations and condemns the ICC's actions, supported by some Western countries, including the U.S. However, France, Belgium, and Slovenia support the ICC's decision. The ongoing conflict began with a Hamas-led attack on Israel on October 7th, leading to an extensive Israeli offensive in Gaza, resulting in significant casualties and displacement. The situation remains dire with escalating battles and challenges in delivering humanitarian aid. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen called for a unified response from the U.S. and Europe to address China's industrial overcapacity, particularly in clean energy sectors. Speaking in Frankfurt, Yellen emphasized the need for strategic and united action to protect manufacturers in both regions and emerging markets. She highlighted concerns about China's excess production in electric vehicles, solar products, semiconductors, and other industries flooding global markets with cheap exports. The Biden administration recently imposed steep tariffs on Chinese goods in these sectors, aiming to safeguard U.S. workers and firms from what Yellen described as unfair Chinese economic competition. This issue will be a key focus at the upcoming G7 finance meetings in Italy, where Yellen hopes for a collective stance on Chinese industrial policies. Yellen also addressed the importance of using frozen Russian assets to support Ukraine, urging G7 countries to develop a substantial aid plan from the $300 billion in frozen assets. This plan will be discussed at the G7 Leaders Summit in June. Additionally, she emphasized the need for unity against Russian aggression and Iranian terrorism support. Overall, Yellen's message centered on coordinated international efforts to tackle economic challenges posed by China and support for Ukraine amidst ongoing conflicts. China is considering imposing tariffs as high as 25% on imported cars with large engines from the U.S. and E.U., according to the China Chamber of Commerce to the E.U. This potential move comes as trade tensions rise between China and these regions, coinciding with the European Commission's upcoming decision on whether to impose tariffs on Chinese electric vehicle EV exports by June 5th. The tariffs would significantly impact major car makers like Toyota, Mercedes-Benz, and BMW. China is also hinting at retaliatory tariffs on European wine and dairy products. The suggested tariff rate on imported cars with engines larger than 2.5 liters would affect approximately 250,000 cars, about 32% of all imported vehicles in 2023. This escalation follows recent U.S. actions, including the Biden administration's 100% tariffs on Chinese electric cars. The EU is also investigating Chinese subsidies across various industries, leading Chinese firms to withdraw from European rail and energy tenders. China's EV market dominance and extensive battery supply chain control have sparked concerns in the U.S. and EU as Chinese automakers expand overseas amid a domestic price war and slowing economy. President Xi Jinping's recent visit to Europe aimed to dissuade the EU from following the U.S.'s aggressive trade measures, which Beijing views as counterproductive to green development and harmful to consumers. Matthew Trickett a 37-year-old British man charged with espionage for assisting a foreign intelligence service from Hong Kong was found dead in Grenfell Park in Maidenhead, west of London. The police are treating his death as unexplained and are conducting an ongoing investigation with a post-mortem examination pending. Trickett, a private investigator, was recently charged under the UK's National Security Act alongside Chi Long Wai, a UK Border Force officer, and Chung Biu Wen, an office manager at the Hong Kong Economic and Trade Office in London. The next court hearing is scheduled for May 24th at the Old Bailey. Trickett was out on bail and required to regularly check in at a police station. 
Police are seeking information from the public about anyone who was in the park before 5.15 p.m. on Sunday. China's embassy in the UK criticized British authorities, calling the case a fabrication. Russia has begun military drills involving tactical nuclear weapons in what appears to be a warning to Western nations over their involvement in the Ukraine conflict. The drills, which include nuclear-capable Kinjal and Iskander missiles, are taking place in the southern military district, encompassing areas bordering Ukraine, Crimea, and other regions Russia annexed from Ukraine. This is the first time Russia has publicly announced drills involving tactical nuclear weapons, though strategic nuclear forces regularly conduct exercises. The drills were announced on May 6th in response to statements from Western officials about potentially deeper involvement in the Ukraine war. French President Emmanuel Macron mentioned not excluding the possibility of sending troops to Ukraine, and UK Foreign Secretary David Cameron indicated that Ukrainian forces could use British long-range weapons to strike inside Russia. These statements prompted the Kremlin to escalate the situation, leading to the current nuclear drills. Tactical nuclear weapons are designed for battlefield use and are less powerful than strategic nuclear weapons, which are intended for large-scale destruction. The Kremlin described the Western officials' comments as dangerous, increasing tension between Russia and NATO. Taiwanese lawmakers from the opposition Kuomintang, KMT, and Taiwan People's Party, TPP, are pushing to pass a bill on Friday that would increase legislative oversight of new President Lai ching tes administration. The move has sparked significant protests from Lai's supporters, who argue that the amendments have been rushed and could undermine his government by entangling it in investigations. Following President Lai's recent inauguration, several thousand supporters gathered outside the legislature on Tuesday to express their opposition to the bill. Although the crowd thinned on Wednesday, larger protests are anticipated when the bill is revisited. The contentious amendments aim to establish committees that can investigate the government, military, and private entities, demanding witnesses and documents. If the bill passes, individuals or entities that do not comply could face fines. Additionally, the amendments would require officials to appear more frequently in the legislature to answer questions, with potential criminal penalties for contempt of Congress. The ruling Democratic Progressive Party, DPP, has criticized the amendments as unconstitutional and disruptive, while the KMT has accused the DPP of, of obstructing legislative reform and avoiding serious debate. President Lai, who secured only 40% of the vote in the January election, faces a challenging start to his presidency, with the KMT holding a parliamentary majority and the Speaker's role bolstered by their alliance with the TPP. Despite the political unrest, Taiwan's stock market remained relatively stable, with investors focusing on external factors such as NVIDIA Corp's earnings. The benchmark TIEX gauge saw a 1.3% rise, while the Taiwan dollar remained steady against the U.S. dollar.